Hello everyone. I am starting with a new series that is Quick Medicals Revision Series, and this is my first lecture in Quick Medical Revision Series. I will be covering various topics in this series, which will be based on the MCQs generally asked in various competitive exams. So, subscribe to the series and get the updates. So, let us start with the first chapter of this series that is about the ostium primum, ostium secundum and foramen ovale. So let us start. Now here is the heart in the embryonic life. The heart has not fully formed. It is just like a tube like structure. There is no segregation between the arteria, no segregation between the ventricles, no segregation between the artery and ventricles. First of all the septa start forming in this tube like structure and these septa start forming between the 27 to 37 days of embryonic life. The septa forms in two ways, one is from the endocardial cushion. These endocardial cushion are nothing but these are the masses of the cells which starts proliferating in the atrial ventricular area and starts opposing each other. So they just proliferate and starts opposing each other and meet in the lumen and thus segregating the heart from the upper to the lower portion. Then these cells starts proliferating and forms the base or starts forming the septa. Another part of the septa which starts from the upper part of the heart, it is a crescent like sheath which starts forming between the arterias or which starts forming and divides the art complete tube or arteria between the right and left arteria. This sheath starts forming and extends downward and leaves a gap in its lower portion and that gap is known as ostium primum. So this septum which was originating, this septum is known as septum primum and the gap which is left at its lower area adjacent to these arteriventricular walls, this gap is known as ostium primum. So this is septum primum, this is a gap known as ostium primum. With the development, this ostium primum gap is healed up or a complete septa is formed and gradually there starts a absorption of the upper part of this septum primum and there forms a gap or opening known as septum secundum. These openings are necessary for the flow of the blood from right arteria to left arteria as during the embryonic life the hearts are known or the lungs are non-functional, the blood cannot pass through the lungs, it passes directly from the right heart to the left heart. So ostium primum was a gap in the lower portion of the septum primum and ostium secundum is a gap formed in the upper portion of the septum primum after the closure of ostium primum. So if these gaps persist, they form the septal defect. Let us clarify it further. Now. On the right side of this septum primum, a thick rigid septa starts developing, covering this secundum area and this thick septa starts developing and it's in its lower and upper margin remains a gap, remains an opening. This opening is nothing but foramen ovale. So ostium primum and ostium secundum were the openings of the septum primum and foramen ovale is the opening of the or uh, um, opening between the upper and lower margin of the septum secundum which is a, which is a rigid structure which is a rigid sheath so this foramen ovale now acts like a passage for the passage of the blood from right arteria to the left arteria during the embryonic life so foramen is a passage between the foramen ovale opening and the ostium secundum of the septum primum. Now this part of the septum primum acts like a flap. The blood can pass from right arteria to left arteria but as soon as the burst takes place the lungs start developing the pressure in the left arteria starts increasing. This pressure acts on this flap like septum primum and it opposes the septum secundum and closes the opening and gradually these two septa fuse up after the birth so gradually these two septas fuse up after the birth and complete septum is formed so this foramen ovale 
closes soon after the birth but if this foramen ovale remains or sometimes there remains a pro patency that means the pro can be passed on this foramen ovale that is known as patent foramen ovale it is insignificant it is asymptomatic doesn't cause any symptom and gradually the when the septum fuses there remains a depression in this area of the foramen ovale and that depression is known as fossa ovalis so this is the way the closure of foramen ovale happens and fossa ovalis form septum secundum form septum primum form now this was about the foramen ovale now sometimes what happens that there is a incomplete formation of the septum primum or excessive atrophy of the septum primum or incomplete formation of the septum secundum so there remains a large opening a large gap so that large gap remains and the septa are not completely formed there remains a septum secundum defect and the defect in the foramen ovale area it is a large opening the fossa ovalis area and that opening which or the def that defect which remains when the septa are not completely formed then that defect is known as septal defect for patent foramen ovale defect was patency of the foramen ovale was there that that was not causing any of the shunting of the blood from right artery to left artery it was just closing off as the left artery pressure was increasing but this defect the sec secundum defect which remains because of the excessive absorption of the primary septum or non development of primary septum or incomplete development of the septum secundum this gap remains and there is a large opening as compared to the foramen ovale but that is i agree in the area of the foramen ovale only but this opening is now large because of the incomplete development of the septum secundum and thus remains a passage which acts for the shunting of the blood from left atria to the right atria when the foramen ovale was there just a minor opening was there this minor opening was just closing off because of this flap like structure and blood was not able to come from left to right side but now the gap is larger the septas are not fully developed with the increase in pressure of the left atria the blood will come from left atria to right atria through this shunt and this is known as septal defect so this is all about the ostium secundum ostium primum septum primum septum secundum foramen ovale and patent foramen ovale so thank you so much and have a nice day i hope you enjoyed the video I try to make it simple if you have any of the doubts ask me in the comment section and subscribe for the future updates thank you so much